How's it going, guys? Enric here, and we're back. With, welcome back to part 87 of Katara Shoujo. Um, previously, what happened was that, uh, crap. Oh, we're at the, uh, I think we're at the, uh, whatchamacallit, at Illy's, um, summer house, summer vacation house, something like that. Some type of house thing. I'm not sure because I'm an idiot, but, anyways, so that. Basically what happened, uh, Lily came back, and so we're at a house, I think. So, I actually really love it. That's just Northern Sojourn, okay. Um, oh, okay, now I remember. As soon as we set foot inside, Hanako and I start looking around, taking in every detail of where we'll be staying for the next few days. It actually looks pretty clean. All the artifacts of another's life stopped mid-motion are around the house. Such as the television guide lying beside the counter it was on, and pans in the adjoining kitchen still sitting on the stove. Well, that's not... that's not good. It's a strange feeling, really, as if we were stopping into Akira's life for a brief moment, before leaving in a, in a couple of days just as we'd come. Of course, the more mundane reality is that she j just hasn't cleaned up after herself that well. Huh. Where should we put our bags? I'll show Hanako our bedroom. You can put yourself here if you like. Yo, oh, put yours yourself. Yours here if you like. You mean I don't have the same bedroom as you? No, that is not a good idea. That is not a good idea. Oh, go. Flowers into a full blush as Lily takes her cheek in her hand. Oh my, how bold. You too. Hold on. If I'm leave, I'm, I'm to leave my bags here. Where, where will I be sleeping? The futon. Well, seeing as we lack a guest bedroom, the convertible futon, huh? Convertible! What? There is such a thing as called a convertible futon? It looks like a normal futon, that's like my futon, but mine is the covers, it's the weird looking covers. Sorry, Hassel. I sigh lament lamenting my place on the bottom rung of sleeping location priorities. Ha! I guess there's no other choice. Well, it's not that much of a big house as I saw, and there's a loud car coming by. Lily leaves to, leaves to show Hanukkah to her bare bedroom. As I take a small tour of my surroundings after I drop my bag on the floor. Oh man, that's a... that's really... Okay, what's this? Is that supposed to be like a chimney part or something? I don't... is it supposed to be a vent? I, I don't know. That's a microwave. The kitchen, just like the living room, is fairly modest. The rustic nature of the wooden furnish furnishings drive home just how far we are from civilization. Hey, the pillow moved, I think. Returning to the living room, I decide to try out the television until they get back. With the touch of the remote, it immediately flickers to life, apparently set to a news channel. Almost flopping down from exhaustion rather than sitting, I lay back and watch. And watch. And watch. Oh, you're gonna go to sleep. Hallelujah. You need to get comfortable with that futon. Well, that was an early jump cut. The sound. Oh. I quickly blinked to wake myself up, Lily and Hanako, having returned minus their bags. From the Hokkaido night sky visible outside the windows, it looks like I drifted off to sleep. Looking to the wall-mounted clock, it's already 10. You found the television. Eh, voice crack. You found the television then. Yeah, it really does feel nice and homey here. Ah, homey. I'm glad you like it. You all were already out like a light when we came back after unpacking our things, so we didn't he have the heart to wake you sooner. Jug it. Yeah, but judging from her giggle, I must sound funny when I sleep. I swiftly decide not to inquire. There's some dinner waiting for you in the kitchen. Ah! Ah! Ah, you missed dinner. Sucks to be you. Hanako gives a deep yawn, only just remembering how to cover her mouth at the last second. My, my, are you tired? Um, what? I didn't get much sleep last night. I'm pretty tired too. It was a long walk up here, and it's getting late. If that's the case, I suppose we should retire for the night. Good night, Hisao. Hey, what about the dinner? <laughs> you need to get to eat. He's gonna be like, uh, good night. Night. Ah, it's too many nights. Ah. But then, they quietly turn and walk back to their bedroom. Rubbing my eyes, I sigh. I wonder if I'll, I'll be able to get back to sleep after being woken up. I suppose I'll eat something and watch some more TV quietly before going to bed. Or you're gonna just sit there and stare at the blank wall and it's like, oh, and you go to sleep. That's how it goes. 
that's how it goes for me. I just look at this at the ceiling and just like this looks familiar and I go to sleep. Like the instant I say it looks familiar, I just go to sleep. Is he still sleeping? I think so. I'm not I am, however, incredibly tired. It's getting late in the morning. I know that. He oh my god. I like he luckily stayed up to watch television. I could hear it from our bedroom. Wow, you must Wow, you must be serious. You do not lower down the volume of the television before you do something. God dang it. I'm gonna do something before you go to bed. Only because I couldn't get to sleep. Should we wake him? Don't do that, Hanako, please. No, we should leave him. I doubt he'd want to be woken early if he didn't get much sleep much sleep during the night. Thank you, Lily. Besides, he sounds so peaceful. It would be a shame to wake him when he's like this. Keep a straight face as well. It is, it is nice she cares so much though. Um, Hanako, could you go to the fridge and fish out what's needed to make lunch? Alright, just the vegetables and rice. That should be enough. We only need something simple. As we can eat in town later. Hanako's footsteps on the carpeted floor can be heard. Moving away from the living room. As they do, I feel Lily's hand gently rest on my chest. Oh, well, that's weird. It takes a titanic effort not to react, but something about her makes me think she knows I'm awake. A long silence passes. The only thought in my mind is for that gentle, outstretched hand laying upon my chest. After an indiscretable, what? indiscretable amount of time, Lily withdraws her hand. Good morning, Issa. She knew! Holy crap! Ow, my knee! Ah. Conceding defeat all too easily, I propped myself up and rubbed my eyes. How'd you know? You breathing was your breathing was off. What? Well, that makes sense. She couldn't have needed that long to work it out. Knowing her hearing, she likely knew about laying her hand on me. If you want to sleep more, you should really go to bed earlier. I heard the television going long into the night. Sorry about that. My medications have been interfering with my sleep for a while now. Even if I'm tired, I have trouble actually sleeping. I'm sorry for bringing it up, Hisao. No. Oh. I sigh. This is exactly the kind of thing I always wish others wouldn't do. Oh, crap. What does waver off mean? Oh, God. Let's address it. Come on. You worry about me more than I do at times. It just means I have to sleep a bit longer, that's all. But still, I'd say that I look absolutely fine, but I guess that wouldn't have a lot of meaning for you. Yeah, because she can't see. Blind joke. I don't know how many blind jokes we made. I think that was the first one. She gives a sigh of concentration before trailing off with an amused chuckle, giving up the point. If you say so, please do take care of yourself as well. God dang it. Go on, Hanukkah could use some help. She moves to, prote moves to protest, but reluctantly acquisits this and disappears into the kitchen, her hand running along the smooth white walls as she slowly walks. For a while, I sit and watch television in an attempt to wake myself a little more, but it's futile. I don't have anything better to do, so I follow Lily's lead. The kitchen- What is that supposed to be? That's a really- <laughs> Why did they mess up that toilet- That the toilet- <laughs> What was this called? The- They gotta have one of these. Freaking- Make tissue- Cotton- I don't know. As I around the corner, I see Hanukkah and Lily. Backs turn, quietly cutting food on the granite colored counter. That's not granite, it's more like asphalt, no, I'm just kidding. I am temporarily engrossed as I watch Lily guiding the knife down carefully with the finger on the cabbage she's cutting. Each slice delivered slowly, but with precision. precision. She seems a little slow, but considering that she can't see what she's doing, it's a small wonder she can cook at all, let alone for both her and Hanako. Hi, Hanako. Lily, want any help? Is that it's. Uh, oh, don't tell me she got her finger! Oh, warning his sound. Okay. Oh, oh. oh. God, I. <laughs> what was up with the freaking. Ah! Ah! Lily jerks back in surprise before turning around, hurry up, immediately drawing Hanako and I to her side. That was a, a small trickle of scarlet falls downward from her pale fingertip, the knife having cut just. Deep enough to draw blood. Oh, jeez! Look what you did! You just freaking made someone cut their finger. And with the television sound masking my footsteps, she must not have noticed me coming. To compensate for having to use touch to guide everything she does during cooking, she must need to pay extra attention. Lily, oh, don't look what you've done. Don't worry, Hanako. It's just a small wound. It's a flesh wound. 
You should still get a band-aid on it, at least until it stops bleeding. First aid stuff would be in the bathroom, right? I think so. She's not amused, look what you've done. I think so. Will you be okay here, Ohamako? Ugh, I keep on hitting my freaking desk with this chair. I frown at how little heat she's paying to herself as Hanako gives a quick, almost a automatic nod. It's fine, I can keep making lunch. Oh no, what is up with this? An awkward silent reigns as I set the bottle of antisep antiseptic and box of band-aids on the side of the sink, Lily's finger held out for me to treat. The lid of the bottle comes off with a minimum of resistance and the small ball of cotton has soaked in the liquid stains a pale green. Ew. Pale green is nasty, no, I'm just kidding. Okay, hold still. This will probably hurt a bit. She gives a small nod as I take hold of her hand to steady it. With all the tenderness I can muster, I gently bring a damped wad to the small red line. Ah. What? I barely touched it. You barely touched it. That's what you think. Sorry. I get the side both at her reaction to settle my own nerves. Her pain tolerance is startlingly startlingly low yeah because she has to focus her like senses are enhanced if she can't see i would tell you to man up but i can't really do that yeah you can't do that as she gives a small giggle i take advantage of her momentary distraction and gently press the cotton against her finger for a few times thankfully it's enough to do the job we both settle we both settle somewhat as i bring the band-aid over the tip of her finger covering the wound while making sure not to get it stuck in her fingernail there finished you can move now Taking her hand off mine, she gently clasps it in the other. Thank you. It's no problem, man. It's the least I can do after causing you to hurt yourself, after all. You punk. She lowers her head slightly at the apology, absentmindedly rubbing her hand in what seems to be embarrassment. You failure. I really don't mind. She likes pain. Her answer doesn't seem to make much sense, given that what happened is pretty clearly my fault. I can't help grimacing at her despite the fact that her dainty smile still holds. She must not like being reminded of, of the limitations her lack of sight imposes on her. It's something I can't possibly fault her, fault her for. I've fallen prey at, to the same kind of feelings before, despite my condition not being nearly as up ubiquitous. That sounds like a freaking weird word in my life. Neither of us. And in the happier, we head back to the various smells of cooking food coming from the kitchen. Oh, back to the futon, I guess. I lay the plate of f plates of food steam slowly rising from the well-cooked rice and curry dishes while Hanako lays out the cutlery. Knife holding side, light no knife, one side, fork on the other, western, how perfectly fitting for someone like Lily. As we take our seats, taking carefully heed of the dark red tablecloth hanging below our knees, Lily emerges from the kitchen. In her hands are three glasses and a bottle of wine. As I recall our previous run-in with the devilish elixir, I had my face in my palm. Alcohol? Seriously? You're gonna get drunk! She pauses as she reaches the table, a playful grin perched on her face. Ah, Akira specifically gave permission to take a bottle from her collection. Not only does she give alcohol to minors, she even lets them pill for their own. The perfect model of a responsible adult, Akira is not. More to the point though, is that this is hardly a meal deserving of alcohol, I'm starting to think Lily's the type to easily become hooked on things. That's not really the problem, I don't really have any qualms with it, but didn't you have a bad experience with it last time? Last time was likely due to drinking too much, so a single glass shouldn't prove a problem. Well, you are Scottish, so you know, I think Scott no, I think it was Irish that could take in like a butt ton of alcohol before getting actual drunk. Think of it as a learning experience. I can't recall many learning experiences that made me feel rotten before putting me to sleep. But I'll take your word for it. She dips an uninjured finger inside to feel the liquid level tip against the bottle as the liquid rises up. The white of her finger almost seems to glow as the sunlight hits it, the delicate outline blurred and refracted from by the glass. But her, her fingers are definitely longer than mine. The kind I think more suited to a pianist than a teacher, she'd likely to have done well if she'd learned how to play. I used to play piano. I sucked at it. We quickly dig into our meal, forks and knives clattering against plates. Wait, what do you need to use for, with the knife? A steak? That, I, that's all I can think of with steak. Well, and a huge chicken. Yes. None of us are particularly eager to speak while eating. 
Lily all together too reserved for such a thing. Hanukkah probably too shy to start conversation, and I too busy savoring the food. Such a pedestrian activity eating together at a table, it seems so utterly normal. Yet it makes me realize how long it's been since I've done something like this. Just the three of us sitting around a single table, eating as if we were a well-formed family. Maybe this trip as far away from everything as we are was worth it. Yeah, maybe it was, minus the fact you made someone cut the- Why are we still in the freaking futon? It takes quite a long time, but eventually we all finish our surprisingly filling meal. The wine, thankfully, has little effect given we've only had a glass or two each. Nope. I slump back into the seat, rubbing my stomach contentedly. I'm stuffed. Holy pats his mouth with a napkin twice, only twice, and with evenly timed intervals in between, it's hard to tell sometimes whether how she acts is a well-trained routine or a well-rehearsed act. I think I must be as well. Did you like it, Hanako? Mm, it was nice. Yeah, what's up with the two M's? Now that we're well fed, shall we be off? Off? Where? Oh, you weren't pri you weren't privy to the discussion between me between Hanako and I earlier. I get the impression that she's having a subtle dig at my sleeping in. We'll be going to into the town nearby. I guess I should have expected two girls to take a holiday as an excuse to go shopping. Hey, like what's two these two kinda of reminds me of my sisters. Minus the fact they have, you know, disabilities. Okay. Uh, no matter where on the planet they may be. I am interested to see more around the north though, so this can only be a good thing. Sounds good. How long's the walk in then? It's supposed to be around a mile to a mile and a half. Nearby, huh? Great. Just great. Hey, you know, you're gonna ask what is this? This does not look like the countryside. As we climb up the path surrounded by trees and undergrowth, I watch Lily and Hanako walking ahead. The slight breeze all but whisks away the sound of Lily's, Lily's cane gently tapping on the ground. I notice that Lily's since removed the band-aid now that the bleeding of her finger has stopped. A deep, lung-filling breath of the fresh country air makes me, makes me wish all the harder that the air around home had been quite so clean. I, it can't have even been half a mile, but I'm already working up a sweat. It isn't a pleasantly cool day though, so I shouldn't be too hard on myself for it. Hey Lily, how well do you know this town anyway? Since I spent quite a few of my vacations here up until I entered Yamakura, I'd say I know it fairly well. We used to drive there once a weekend and then... Once a weekend? When? How I wish Akira was here to drive us now. I quickly take a moment to rub my hands a couple of times, staving off the oddly cold feeling in them. I feel like Lily's gonna be like a drunk addict. Like, not drink, like have a drinking problem later on, I don't know. Did you like it up here? I'd say it was nice during winter, but as you can work out, summers get a little too hot for comfort. It's nice and quiet, at least. My family's wheelhouse is quite far south. When they left Japan, my parents gave it to Akira and I. Only Akira lives there now, after my moving into Yamaku. My god, this is a long dialogue! Well, quite certainly describes, quite certainly describes this place, though lonely is how I put it. Other than the prophesied small town, prophesied, prophesied, I don't know. There isn't another soul of miles around. Coming from a home nestled deep within the big city is certainly different. I think that if I if I not come to Yamaku, staying out in the country like this would be too much of a change to get used to. After getting accustomed to the school's isolation though, the idea of living in a place such as this has become almost inviting. To be somewhere away from the hustle and bustle of the metro metropolit oh, I can I can share what I I can't even say anything. Metropolitan Metropolitan uh sit centers. Ah crap, I can't even read anymore. So Hisao, have you been to Hokkaido before? Nah, I used to live down south and what is up with everybody saying down south? I used to live in the south. Oh god, that runs too much of the conversation. Okay. And we never had any field trips or holidays up this far. Well it's a new experience for you then. Hey, don't be so happy. Freaking next thing you know, a heart attack. Yeah, it is. I'm surprised at how nice it feels here. How about you, Hanako? She shakes her eh. She shakes her head from side to side. It's my first time too. As we continue walking, I begin to feel pins and needles in my legs. Feel the burn. It's a little disturbing, given there's no reason for it to be happening. Could you two hold on a minute? A moment. I just need to. Is anything wrong? Nah, no, I just got pins and needles in 
Oh no! I just jinxed. What is up with jinxing stuff? What the? Mm. Mm. Why do I keep saying stuff? Freaking in Nokas, Nokisu. Freaking! Oh, you're gonna die, Doctor. You're gonna die. Fudge! And now I'm freaking. I say heart attack. Heart attack. God dang it! My vocal cords suddenly become taut as my chest tightens intensely. I quickly pull my upper arm over it, trying to quail over the shot of pain spreading throughout my entire body. Is Sal? Lily's face is so... What? It's only mildly concerned not knowing the sight which Hanako's recoiling from. I'm fine, I'm fine, just tired. I remove my arm from my chest and force myself to begin walking again. It's just a minor heart flutter, so it'll just pass like the others. No, -uh. It's like me when I freaking had my foot numb, and I was like, oh, I can walk, figured I almost fall. I, I hate you that. It only takes a couple of steps before my body violently revolts against me, my legs suddenly beginning to give way underneath me and all tension and my knees seeming to evaporate. It's greater things. I swear to god. Man, no! 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 It is not it! It is not- The time is not the charm! Maybe that one is it. No. The, oh my god! <laughs> No, I think that's- hold on, hold on a minute. I think that one might be it after all. Oh my god.